welcome to another episode of How to Raise a Mazel Mensch. Today we're going to be talking about this question of how to help children learn to be more responsible. I don't know about you, but I've never met a responsible baby. I've never met a responsible toddler, but I have met responsible adults, people who are truly a mensch, someone who is responsible for their actions. So how does that transition happen? I think that while there are certain character traits that a person can be born with that will make it easier for them to be more responsible or traits that might make it more difficult for them to be responsible, um, at the end of the day, responsibility is a character trait that is taught, that is nurtured by the adults in a child's life so that they learn how to be a responsible person, how to be a mensch. So how do we do it? In my experience, responsibility is linked to two subcategories. The first is independence. If I see and understand that I can make my own choices, then I can be held responsible for them. If I'm not the one who did it and I didn't do it independently, then how can I be responsible for it? So they gotta work hand in hand. The second aspect is accountability. So you have independence and accountability. In accountability, I understand that my choices have consequences. They might be positive or they might be negative, but every action has an outcome for which we are accountable for. Today, I just wanna focus on the aspect of independence. In our next episode, we'll talk more about accountability. So let's talk about independence. I feel like all adults, we have this reflex that when we see a child is struggling with something, we naturally want to just jump in and fix it and make it better for them. It's just this urge that we have, something we want to do for our children. And sometimes unintentionally without realizing, we're holding them back from really learning how to be independent and how to be more responsible. In parenting, we have these terms, we call it helicopter parenting. The parent that is always, you know, hovering above the child, making sure that everything's okay, taking care of everything, smoothing everything out. And nowadays we have this new term, which is called snowplow parenting, where you have the adult just smoothing the way ahead, taking care of any obstacles that are in the way, just making sure that everything in front of the child is wonderful, smooth, and easy. Now, obviously, this type of behaviors, which we can sometimes without realizing do, make it much more difficult for a child to build a sense of responsibility. So we need to learn how to be more thoughtful and more conscious of ourselves. That's really the first step. One of the things that holds parents back from stepping a little bit back and um, not stepping in to help our children is that we sometimes see it as a form of expressing our love to them. You know, I love you. I want to take care of you. I want to make everything easier for you. And the consequence of that can really be that holding the child back. So how do we deal with this? There's this great um, series of books called Five Love Languages that identify different ways that human beings like to express love or like to receive love. And acts of service is one out of five love, life, love languages. But there are also four other ones. There's acts of service, there's touch, there's verbal expression, there's quality time, and there are gifts. Sometimes we can get so caught up in using acts of service as a way of loving and nurturing our children. And it may be, and again, this is where we need to be conscious of being mindful of what we're doing. It may be at some points healthier and better for them to use some of their other love languages as a way that we are going to nurture and express our love for them and to hold back. That doesn't mean that sometimes it's not okay to help your child get dressed or to take care of them in other ways. But the point is that you're really being conscious of what you're doing and choosing, okay, now I'm gonna just do it for you because I love you and I wanna let you know and make you feel loved. But now is a time where I'm going to hold back because this is a moment where it is better for you, for you to have to do this on your own and to have to be independent. And independence falls into a category of either taking care of yourself, self-care, or into any household task, chores around the house, being a responsible member of the family unit. The other area when it comes to either self-care or household chores that often holds parents back from giving children more independence is we know 
it's not going to be done the same way. You know, we know how we want a certain chore to be done. We know how um, we want a certain aspect of self-care for the child to be taken care of. And their kids, <laughs> they just don't have as many skills or as much experience to do it right. So I'm just going to do it for them. But this is really a teaching opportunity. If we identify an area of a child's life that we know they really could do it on their own, um, and they can if we guide them. Once we identify it, the first step is to do it with them, to teach them, to show them, this is how it's done. Let's do it together. Here's how we set the table. Here's how we wash dishes. Can you take care of this part and I'll do this other part? Here's how we um, clean up our room, take care of our stuff. Um, you know, here's how we put on our shoes. And then gradually, little by little, with practice, and after having shown them how we would like it to be done, they become better and more skilled and more independent. Now, it's okay, by the way, to even break it down to small parts. So for example, zipping up a jacket, you start the zipper and they can pull up the rest. And this is for little kids, but that idea also carries on into other areas of responsibility. And children can do a lot when it comes to household chores or taking care of themselves and being responsible for their actions, whether it's their schoolwork or whether it's their own you know, selves and their own things. And the more that we praise and identify that characteristic, you were responsible. I'm so proud of you. I mean, it's a big word, but kids love big words. And kids of all ages have the ability to be responsible. Honestly, if a child is walking and talking, they can already help in any of these aspects and start doing things more independently. And when you praise them and makes them feel so good about themselves and makes them feel like, wow, yes, I can see myself as a responsible person um, and I am responsible. So the more you invest in that, the more you give them the opportunities, the more you teach them, the more you show them, the more you guide them, the more you cultivate the idea of responsibility and a sense of responsibility in your child. Next week, we're going to talk more about the aspect of accountability. And I'm really looking forward to sharing more of how to use accountability as a form of cultivating independence. Shabbat Shalom. That's all for today.